Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video of the Golang URL shortening service project backend series. We're using Golang, Redis, and Docker to create a complete URL shortening project. <clears throat> now, in the previous video, we worked on our database.go file and our resolve function. In this file, I want to work on the shorten function, the shorten URL function that we started creating in the second video. But I want to implement rate limiting here. Uh, it's not very straightforward, so that's why I wanted to keep it to this video. So rate limiting, what we're going to do is we're going to check uh, if that user, right, if the IP address of that user has been already entered in our database. If it's uh, if it's not there, like, you know, if this user is using this service, right, for the first time, then you want to store it uh, with an API quota, like let's say about 10 API requests for 30 minutes or something. But if the user, <clears throat> uh, you know, already has uh, used the service, as in his IP address is already stored in our database, then you want to decrement uh, his rate, as in the number of API calls he's done. We want to decrement it. So like if it was 10, you want to make it 9. If you use it once more, you make it 8, 7, 6, 5, and so on, right? So just the rate limiting part is what we'll implement in this video. I want to take it slow. I'll explain to you every single line so that everything is everything makes sense. Now, <clears throat> in case uh, you had put this kind of a comment uh, along with me in the second video, which was implement rate limiting, this is where we're going to implement rate limiting. All right. And uh, I firstly uh, want to create a database client. To be able to create a database client, you want to import the database, right? Which is your database.go package. How do you do that? You imported that in your resolver, uh, resolve.go file. So you want to import it here again. So you'll say, uh, just copy and paste this. So the database uh, package has been now imported. Uh, so now what you'll do is we'll um, say database, which is the database package that you just imported, dot create client, which creates a new client. And in this case, you'll pass one, which is the name, number of the database. And you will capture it in a variable called R2. Make sense? So R2 is your Redis database client. And what you want to do, just like you did in the resolve function, you want to close this client when this function ends. So whenever you write deferred, it means that this function, whatever you're writing in front of this, is going to be executed at the end of the call stack of this function. So you say defer R2 dot close, basically you're going to close the connection to this database. Once everything is done, once you're done, you don't want to keep the database connection opened, right? And um, you want to get the IP address, you want to check for the IP address uh, in your Redis database. Now you already know that um, Redis is a key value pair database. So you pass some key and you get some value back. So you'll say r2 dot get, which is so you get two methods with Redis, get and set, right? Get uh, is to get something using a key. So you pass a key, you get the value. So you'll say r2.get and you're going to pass the context database dot cdx comma c dot ip address. You pass the ip address and you'll get some result back. Now, <clears throat> ip in this case is your key. For this key, you'll get some value back. You're going to capture that in a variable called value. And also you might get an error uh, when, when, when you're performing this operation. When you're connecting to uh, Redis, you're performing the get operation, you might get an error. So you want to capture that as well. And you want to check for that error. So if error uh, is equal to redis.nil, that means you didn't find any value in the database. You want to say <coughs> r2.set. So like I told you, there are two methods that you get with Redis, get and set. Set is for setting a value. So what you want to do is you want to set the API quota uh, because what we're doing, saying is that for this user, the IP address, uh, this user with this IP address has never used a service uh, in the past 30 minutes. That means it's not stored in our database. That means we now want, so this, means, this means that this is the first time he's using our service, right? So you want to store his IP address now in our database along with an API quota, which, uh, which we have already defined in the env file. API quota is 10 and uh, in every 30 minutes it resets. So you'll say r2.set and to set in the database you want to pass database.context comma you'll store his IP address and uh, since we're using the go.env package we get access to 
the environment variables we have just you have defined the .env file using the OS package, right? So that means if you're using the OS package here, we have to obviously import the OS package up here as well. And uh, what you'll say is you'll say os.get env. You want to get the env for API underscore quota, right? This is the environment variable you have defined here, API quota 10, API underscore quota. That's what you want here. And you want to now give the time in which it resets. So in my case, it'll be 30 minutes. So I'll say 30 multiplied by 60 multiplied by time dot second and error in case there's any issues. <clears throat> now, um, if so th this all this happened when I didn't find the IP address of that user in my database, right? So I set his API quota. I set that in this much time it resets. But just imagine if I found this uh, IP address in my database. That means this user has already used uh, the service in the past 30 minutes. So what do you want to do? You want to put else here. That means you found this user in, uh, with the IP address in your database. And you want to do something there, yeah, right? You want to say r2.get database dot cdx comma c dot ip dot result so you're gonna have access to his ip address and uh, as you know we'll get value comma blank because in this case we won't handle the error so we'll say val int and we'll process this now we'll say we'll use a string convert package so str cunv dot ady to convert into um, int. The value int that you get here is basically for this IP address, which is the key, you're getting the API quota. So as you can see, the way you're setting it, right? So that's the key, right? Setting it. When you're setting it, you're setting it for that IP address. You're setting that this is the number of quota he's left with, which is 10, which you have defined here. And you're also defining the time in which it resets. <clears throat> So when you do this, when you say r2.get uh, and IP address, you get the, the key is IP address, you get the value of his quota as in how many API uh, calls is he left with. And you want to capture that in this variable called val int, uh, where you have converted into int. Now you can start convert uh, comparing it with an integer. The, the integer that I want to compare it with is going to be look like this. So I'll say val int less than equal to zero. So like I told you, you know, I'll keep reducing his API quota for starting from 10 to 9, 8, 7 as, as and when he uses this uh, API, uh, this service more and more uh, till the point it becomes <clears throat> equal to or less than zero. When it's, once it becomes equal to zero or even less than zero, we want to say that, hey, you've, you've already exceeded your rate limit. So you can't use the service anymore, right? So that's the logic we're building here. So you'll say limit comma blank character and walrus r2 dot ttl and database dot cdx database dot cdx comma c dot ip dot result so this is sorry ttl and this is context and you put a comma here close this bracket and result is going to be uh, two brackets and you're going to return c dot status saying that hey you have to give exceeded your rate limit so you'll say fiber dot status service unavailable sorry spelling is wrong status make sure you write the right spelling service unavailable and here you uh, pass some json you'll say fiber dot map and you'll pass the exact <coughs> error. So the error in this case is rate limit exceeded. Put a comma and you want to set the rate limit. You'll tell them the rate limit reset is uh, reset is limit divided by time dot nanoseconds divided by time dot minute. So this is your entire logic for rate limiting, right? I'll go over it again. <clears throat> You'll create a database client. 
And when everything is done in this function, you want to close that client, close the connection to the client. You want to get the uh, value associated with the key IP. You'll get the value here. Now, if uh, we're also capturing the error. So if error uh, is that, you know, you didn't find anything in the database, you're saying uh, you're going to uh, set, right? So Redis gives you get and set. So you can set for that IP address, the value of the API quota, which is 10, which you've defined in your environment variable, which you get access to using the OS package. And you're defining 30 minutes as the time limit because 30 minutes in 30 minutes, you want to, you can access that API only 10 times, okay? But if you, uh, if there's some uh, some other error, right, else, you want to check, uh, you want to get uh, the value for that um, database, uh, sorry, that IP address, you want to get the value, uh, which is basically the API quota. And you want to convert into string, uh, sorry, um, in integer from string. And then you want to compare it with zero because every time we use the API, we, uh, we decrement it by one. And so you want to, at some point of time, when you have exceeded, when you have, uh, you know, um, called the API 10 times already, your value int will become equal to or less than zero. In this case, you want to show this error, rate limit exceeded and reset. Now towards the end of the function, I want to write R2, which is my um, client that I've created, r dot decrement and database dot CTX comma C dot IP. This is what's going to happen. <clears throat> okay. So you always decrement it. Anyhow, at the end you're decrementing it. So whenever this function runs and the next time you, whenever somebody tries to shorten the URL next time, uh, you have decremented that weird value by one again. And this entire rate limiting function can then uh, work. So I hope this made sense to you right now. I wanted to take some time and just create just one video for just the rate limiting part because uh, this might confuse people. I've explained every single line, but still, if you didn't understand something, put it in the comments below. I'm quite uh, responsive in the comments. Or if you have a bigger issue and you're not understanding much, then you can um, message me on LinkedIn as well. So my in my description of the videos, I usually have my LinkedIn uh, link. And get get in touch with me there but usually um, i recommend you watch the beginner level videos and then you watch watch these intermediate, intermediate level videos and only then you uh, graduate towards the advanced videos that are there on my channel don't just jump to the advanced videos so uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already because you'll come to know when the next video of the series comes out and also uh, more awesome content like this keeps coming out on my channel there are more than 100 golang videos so do check them out thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video